Hello there, this is Lohi from Traders. Um, I'm looking at Bradford and Bingley. You can't short Bradford and Bingley, the stock is unborrowable, that's across the board. Look at Woolworths, WLW. I'd like to sell 42,000. It's going down. I don't believe me. <laughs> I'm just a shopkeeper. <laughs> I've just been whacked in one of my shorts. This is a city trading room like no other. Because no one here has ever worked in the city before. 900 quid. Like that. These eight men and women have been given one million dollars and two months to run their own hedge fund. And invest in the stock market as they see fit. This is one of those experiences that money can't buy. Go on Lockheed Martin. It's a radical idea created by one of the city's leading hedge fund managers, Lex Van Dam. I'm taking a huge risk here. I need people who participate, who also care a lot. And if they don't care enough, then I'll make sure they care. They've had to trade during the worst economic crisis in a generation. Another volatile day here. Crude oil futures are rallying, essentially wiping. Yes, yes. While some enjoyed success. I think you've traded really, really well. So you should be proud. Excellent. Others have been pushed to breaking point. What a nightmare. I don't need to feel less self-worth at the moment. Simon, do you have a say? Yeah. And one trader has already resigned. The last time I had trauma like this was getting divorced. I mean, that gives you right. an indication of, of how awful, traumatic I'm finding this experience. I yeah. think it's time to, to quit. For the seven remaining traders, it's going to get a whole lot worse. We're going to have to just slam the guys down who aren't going to do it. So why should we keep you? Um, I've got two more weeks left, right? Um, well, you have two more weeks left if you answer the question properly. Who cares if he's not happy? They're people! No, 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 they don't! This is just the way the business works. Whatever personal morals or dilemmas you have, yeah, you, I leave take them home. As they enter the final push to the end, not everyone will survive. Either we get this out in the open and stop making knee-jerk, crappy judgments. No, Mike, it's not knee-jerk, crappy it. judgments. Well, yes, it is, Emil, because no, I don't not. know what's going on. You have your choice whether you stay or you go. If they walk out, then it just shows, yes, it's actually really difficult to make it to the end. Over the last five weeks, the credit crisis has sent shockwaves throughout the financial world. FTSE 100 is down 20. Barclays wrote off another 1.1 billion pounds in bad debt linked to the credit crunch and the mortgage market. Nationwide says the price of the average home is now nearly 15,000 pounds less than it was this time last Analysts year. Analysts are expecting losses of as much as 1.7 billion pounds, which would be the biggest loss comfortably in British banking history. Extreme market volatility means making a profit is almost impossible. And Willie Walsh is saying this is the worst trading environment the industry has ever faced. Many professional hedge funds are struggling. So it's no wonder that for the seven remaining rookie traders, it's been an exceptionally testing time. And a split has emerged in the team. Between those with real trading potential and those who are struggling. So far, single mum Caroline has proved herself the best trader and has developed a real taste for making money. By the end of week two, I'd say I was actually starting to quite enjoy myself. And then when you have some trades that actually make money, you really start to enjoy yourself. It's just a fantastic feeling. I suppose if, you know, if you're a gambler at a casino, it's, it's like, it is like winning. It's absolutely brilliant. Drawing on his skills as a promoter and teacher, Emil is also doing well along with Mike, an ex-soldier, who's loving his new life as a trader. Any job where you come in at six, and the next time you look at your watch, oh my God, it's 4.30, you know, and the market's just about to close. Um, yeah, that's got to be a good thing. The youngest star is Ohi, only 20 and from Tottenham. He's a straight-A student and showing great trading skill. When you're making money, you just become really adrenalized. The excitement. The excitement is what keeps you here. Oh, hey, good level to get up, mate. Very well done. Thanks. You live and die a thousand times in a week. And that in itself actually holds a lot of value. Despite these successes, 
Because of the traders who are struggling, the team is down over £10,000. Let's go, guys. Their manager is ex-trader Anton Creel. With only three weeks left, at the morning meeting, the atmosphere is tense. Europe. Auto parts I've got as um, UK. What's the biggest oh, rising sector in Europe, Alex? Banks. Well, I got it as real estate index. Really? Yeah. Forget about index points. We're not here to trade index points. We're here to make money. Amit, a 30-year-old shopkeeper from Lincolnshire, currently has the biggest losses in the group. Okay, major market news. Who's got what? Do you want me to start? Go for it. Go for it. Well, just quickly, on the farm front, things have been quite quiet. But one thing to note is Biogen, which fell absolutely astronomically. Major market news. Is this major market news? No, sorry. Okay, stock specific. Okay. While ex-vet Clio has been crippled by a fear of losing money and has struggled to invest at all. Have you got a strategy? I'm out of Intercontinental now. Oh, right, you're out of it. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, have you got a strategy to go back in? Uh, quite possibly. Quite possibly is it the strategy? Well, if, if the results are good, then I will go in on along because they rally really well. Cool. Should we go and make some money? Yeah. Is that a resounding yes? Yes. yes. <laughs> Environmentalist Sam has also been struggling with life as a trader. What I feel most uncomfortable about in a morning meeting is the kind of focus on the end piece. Let's go make some money. I find that really distasteful. I just really don't like that at all. But that is, that is the, the bottom line, really, for, for, this, for this business, for what's been done here. Sam's been attempting to trade ethically, but he's lost money. And now he's having to accept the fact that most traders don't prioritize ethics. I've never really experienced it. Yeah, there's you know, no people. reason for them to. No. It's only going to be a hindrance. There's too much to think about anyway. Yeah. Which is why, as Mike says, that trading's never going to change the world. There's no reason for it to. Of course it's not. Yeah. It might change my bank balance. <laughs> mm. My impression of what needs to happen in this world, the changes we need to make, is so totally at odds with the way that the financial world is is going and tending towards. You have to be cold and ruthless in many ways. Um, and I haven't seen a lot of incredible human qualities emerging from the people that I've seen who are successful at this game. For Anton, there's no room for ethics in the last big push to make a profit. Over the next couple of weeks, what you're probably going to see is the difference between those that can turn on the brutality switch and make some money and the people who are just here for the ride. If the desk is going to make money, we're going to have to just slam the guys down who aren't going to do it. I think it will get ugly. There's certain people in the group who are displaying traits of being on the brink of paralysis. And if they do actually fall into that psychological mode, there's no place for them on the desk. With a million dollars of his own money on the line, it's the investor Lex Van Dam who ultimately controls the cash and fate of the seven remaining traders. Lex wants to enforce a stricter regime. There's going to be more discipline in people being in the office. Yeah. You know, so they get their lunch between 11.30 and 12. At 12 o'clock, they're just back on the desk. Mm -hmm. And they're not going out for little coffees or whatever. They can go for coffee at 4.30. Uh -huh. Tell them that, you know, shape up or it's not going to work. Right, of course. We've been softy, softy, and now we're going to be real. And yeah. we'll see where it leads us. Lex has already voiced his concerns to ex-vet Cleo. Cleo, you have a sec? He thinks her problem is that despite being highly intelligent, she's too soft. If you um, are in a vet practice and you have a new person and this new person starts crying every time there's an animal that's sick that comes in, yes. what would you do? I haven't cried every time. That's a, that's a sure, no, no, but what would you do well, if, well, if you had a person like that? Well, personally, How would you deal with that? I would give him support. You'd give him support? Yeah. Okay. What happens if the support didn't work? I'd tell them to pull themselves together right. and stop doubting themselves. Okay, so I'm telling you, you should pull yourself together. Absolutely. You should stop doubting yourself. Yeah. Your, ca your capital is halved from 50 to 25. Okay. Um, as far as I can see, you know, you've been distracting the team 
you know, you should focus on yourself, yeah. on your trading. Forget about everybody else. Don't go with your issues to anybody else anymore. You cannot let emotions get in the way. So you're going from 50 to 25. And if you, you know, if, if this week it's the same thing, if you get upset and you start, you know, start talking to other people about it, mm -hmm. then, you know, then this is your last week. Okay. So that's how it is. Thanks very much. Okay, thanks. Okay, thank you. Having reduced his risk with Clio, Lex had already decided to invest this extra cash with his strongest trader, Caroline. You are an example to the group, so I'm going to give you more money. So I'll give you 30 more, right. which is partially taken away from other people. Yeah. So if, if everybody starts crying around you and being depressed, yeah. you should just say, well, you know, you are the, almost like the winner, right? You've taken this from other people. It's nice to be given the extra funds to invest and for the vote of confidence. Having more money means you're actually being told to trade more. I appreciate that, yeah. That is your duty yeah. now. But now Lex has another headache. Amit? Amit has so far placed 23 trades, of which 16 have lost money. You're not applying what you have been taught, mm. which is to build a portfolio. You look tired. Mm. Are you the biggest loser in my portfolio? Mm. You are doing yourself a massive disservice. If you cannot change, you're going to have to go, obviously. Yeah, you know, if you lose a lot more, you're going to have to go. If you can't change, you have to go. So, like, your portfolio, like, you know, in two days, should look very different to what it is now. Okay. Sure. You know? I can do it. You can't just learn this through a book. It's all about experience, you know, day in, day out. I do want to prove to myself that I can do this, you know. I don't, I don't want to walk out of here thinking I can't. But, like I said, the situation I'm in at the moment is that, you know, um, when you've been kicked in the teeth so many times, you've got no teeth left, you know what I mean? It's like almost, okay, I'm going to smile anymore, right? Lex still has £100,000 of his money up for grabs. He will decide at the end of the week who to trust with the extra cash. And whether Amit and Cleo will survive at all as the traders get closer to the end of the experiment. Can you have a look at SAB Miller for me, SAB? Can you look at Nike for us, please? Can you see me him buy me a hundred? Take and now. I'd like to sell 490 shares of Dempsey. Can you have a look at Nike for me, please, N-K-E-U-S? As investors do try to balance both geopolitical tensions with supply and demand... Hedge funds are privately owned investment vehicles that are designed to make money whether the markets go up or down. The FTSE 100 fell more than 2% in the morning. Master the dark art of balancing the two and you'll make money. Further evidence today that the housing market in the UK is set for a protracted downturn. Markets in the UK, Europe and America are now open to the novices. Lehman Brothers may get $7 billion by selling its asset management unit, Noberger. Caroline has £90,000 to invest, and the other strong performers, Ohi, Mike and Emil, have 60000 Far from being daunted, for these four rookies, trading has become almost second nature. Oh, Apple, I love you. I, I love you at this point in time. <laughs> Emil's portfolio is going well, and he's not short of new investment ideas. You look at Adobe when it's open, I said last night. I can't believe it. The only problem is, he's run out of cash. Like, um, you know, it's I still rising, you know, how I much it's rising. Oh, sick. What do you want, an endless pot of cash? Well, you know, yeah, it could nice. be possible. Yeah, yeah, you know, let's just yeah. keep well, it coming. Uh, Emil, it's constantly under review. Okay, cool. Right. I'm actually doing quite well today, and that's why I wouldn't mind there's some more money. You need to trust us that we'll do the right thing. Well, you okay. know, I'm in your hands, aren't I? It's not a big deal. No, no, it's not a big Stocks deal. Stocks will move on Monday as well. I know it's not a big deal, but when you find something, right, and it validates what you originally thought, it feels good, doesn't it? You know that. You've been there yourself with that feeling. Of course it does. Yeah, it's exactly. It's a great feeling. But what are you getting pissed off for? I'm not just like, to, you know, I'm trying to keep me book and make some money. You're the type of trader who's just got itchy fingers yep. and you want to deal all the time, yep. right? You, not me, need to control that. Cool. And that's me being me, diplomatic. Emile's problem is impatience, but Cleo's is nerves. How's your book looking, Cleo? Well, it's got three positions now. What are you long, what are you short? I'm long Tate, yeah. which I'm happy about. What else? Short S uh, long SAB, yeah. which I think is holding up considering the tap news. What are you short? 
uh, intercontinental hotels. Okay. They're not inputted yet. If a trader buys long, they're hoping a stock will rise. If they sell short, a complex process of borrowing, selling and buying back shares, they'll profit when a stock falls. A good hedge fund trader must do both if they want to make a profit. Cleo's been cautioned for not investing. Emil wants to help. Right, that's going up. We're trading. Two things. Who are who are we phoning? No, no, Come it. on, phone them. Second. Phone them. Come on. Emil! This is good. Yeah, this it. is good. Cleo, it's still going up. We spoke about this. Come on. But I don't have, I don't have anything else in America to set off against. Abercrombie & Fitch is broken through. It's down. It's 48. It's, it's two dollars down. It's still going down. A very good trading desk to have is when everybody's got very differing, strong opinions. You don't want to have a desk where everyone agrees on everything because everyone ends up short the same stuff and long the same stuff. And then when you lose money, the magnitude of the loss is always far greater. Good trading means following your instincts, not other people, according to ex-soldier Mike. You have your view of the world, and when you're trading, you express that view by putting money on it. And there's just too much consensus on the desk. You know, there's too many people in too many similar positions. Oh, hi, this is Claire from Traders. I'm very well, thank you. Can you have a look at Tesco's for me, TSCO? All right there, Tesco, please, TSCO. I just get the impression there is not enough debate uh, and people challenging other people's opinions. And I'm loath to because I think people take it personally. You know, um, and they get upset. Trading is an unsentimental business with many unwritten rules. Such as how to deal with your broker when you call to place a trade. <laughs> so we did a, did a track day recently, so this is clients to a track day. Ah, where did you do a track day? Which one? Uh, Silverstone. Oh, Silverstone, yeah. yeah I've, rode, we, um... I've rode Donington. But on oh, a really? motorbike, yeah, yeah, it's good. Ah, so. uh, right. Yeah, yeah I have to. Go yeah, yeah, that's right. Go on, sir. Uh, so can you get me filled on that when I open, do you think? Yeah, sure. So, how much was? Uh, 65. <laughs> Take it easy, uh, see you soon. Bye bye. <laughs> I like the banter with them. Uh, you trading all, all night as well, are you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Hardcore. <laughs> as far as Anson is concerned, the traders are here to make money, not friends. I'm frustrated with you guys because I just want you to get angry. I want you to be vicious on the phone. If you shout down the phone and you make them sit up in their chair, they're going to get it right. Okay? There's no downside to doing it. There's absolutely no downside. Sell 300 at 754 and a half. Thanks. Bye. He's your bitch. Seriously. <laughs> it's just the terminology and everything. Seriously. But Who cares if he's not happy? He's your broker. I care. They're people. Me. No, 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 no. Good management. Days. Cleo, good management is allowing you to learn how to speak to these guys. You've got your unique management style. I've got my own way of doing it's things. It's not a unique no, management on, hold style. Hold on. Listen, listen. Right. Go on. However, I communicate with people, right. I'm always going to do it in my way because I'm always going to get the best out of people. How I deal with them. These guys get spoken to like this on a minute-to-minute -minute basis every day. Does that mean it's right? Right, it is right because it's the way the business works. Mate. Well, doesn't these mean it's guys, right? No, 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 these guys, if you pick up the phone and just go, buy that, add X, that yeah. amount, buy. Yeah. Like, they don't okay. take it personally. It's not an insult, it's their business. What do you think, Amit? Well, what? I've got no problem calling you a bitch. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I think it's rude, personally. Huh? I think it's rude. I think sometimes. I never said you... call him a bitch. And I thought you did. It's the tone. Yeah, sure, yeah. You've got to be firm with them from the outset yes and then if they take the piss out of you then you can go crazy right yeah but if you're not firm with them if you're not firm with them at all for the first three conversations they are going to take the piss out of you yeah it's just in their nature while some enjoy the tough approach and, and that is done for you uh, hey carl does your phone do this <laughs> others find it less acceptable my job here is to get the best out of everybody and hopefully make everyone make money. Mm. That involves turning people into traders, right? My frustration, generally, with the group is just lack of focus. I've been in the industry for a long time, right? Mm. In terms of abrasiveness in the office in this business, yeah. for me it's like going around to my granny's and having a cup of tea. 
right? It's yeah. like, it's part of the business. Almost like military, get out my face. I don't want any distractions, I'm focused. It doesn't have to be like that, trust me. But I, but I, listen, says, yeah. I have to be like that to make myself focused. Okay, right? so that's, you have but, to be but like that's that. What, but trust me when I say it, hmm. most guys in the industry are like that. Doesn't mean it's right. There's a load of bullshit. You know, if somebody respects you, they'll do what you ask them to do. Why speak to another human being in that way when there's no need for it? It's all the bravado. That's what it is. There's, there's so much bravado in the city Small in everything they do. Yeah, it is. I think it is. It's, it, and half the time it ends up being a pissing contest. I think, it, though, if you get like a high concentration of men in one place at one time, it's always going to be like that. And I think if you look around you, the city seems to be a high concentration of men. Yeah. And most of them are arseholes. It's just a load of bullshit. There's still over two weeks to go. And life as a trader is taking its toll on everyone. Hi. Hey, mate. I was thinking of the boys and the girls. Um, everyone's sick. But for investor Lex Van Dam, nothing, not even illness, should stand in the way of profit. I mean, really? Well, Sam and Ohi were sick on Friday, right? Ohi toughed it out and uh, Sam went home early, right? right. And I think the same bug has, been, uh, has spread to Cleo and, uh, and Amit. Cleo uh, was sick three times last night, but she's coming. <laughs> she said to me this morning, if she's going to vomit and she runs off the desk screaming, <laughs> it, to, it's not because I'm emotional, it's because I'm going to be sick. No, but she should just have to tell her that to, to just put a bin next to her. <laughs> they shouldn't make me say emotional about it. Should have a bin next to everybody. And they should throw up in the bin if they have to throw up. Say, like, you know, we don't want people, like, being off the desk all day because they might throw up. Is there anyone who's close to throwing up? Get, they'll go and get uh, two bins. Um, it's, he's apparently been vomiting all night. I'm not happy. My message is that it's going to be really important for him to come in. Because okay. at the end of the day, he doesn't have put on his portfolio, you know, he's going to have to go. Okay. At mid-morning, Amit arrives. Bye. It's actually a bit strange and it's worst, you know, like, you get, you get off and it's like, whoosh, the amount of heat that hits you. Like, no, when you're feeling like that. thinking, oh my God, I'm going to collapse any minute yeah, right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what were the symptoms? Just sickness. Headaches. Did you vomit? Yeah, three times. Yeah. Okay. Headaches? I'd parasite, I'd parasite more. Right. Those came out. Do you know what, you, you should probably go to uh, one of the drop-in centres in the city. Yeah, I reckon, yeah. Yeah, it's like 60 quid. Okay. Yeah. Consultation, okay. and they'll sort you out. All right, sorted. Yeah, yeah. I will do Just that go at, at like, go before lunchtime. Yeah. All right. I right, sorted. Yeah. Just, thanks. Last week, Amit lost twelve hundred pounds from just one investment. This loss has hit him hard, and despite being warned by Lex to widen his portfolio and hedge better, he's only managed to place three trades. I've been beaten quite a few times in the last few weeks, so. Um, it's, it's one of those things, you know, you just, you just got to take it on the chin and move on. The hardest thing is, has been, like, developing my portfolio. You just got to deal with it. If you don't deal with it, like I said, you must call it a day. There's always a chance, yeah? There's always a chance. Hopefully. Yeah, it's just, it's just the <laughs> For Emil and Sam, weeks on end stuck in an office has at times been a real psychological challenge. Do you feel like a battery chicken? Oh, I feel like just like it's like this room and this non-natural light, and it's I like know. it's timeless. I know trusting myself to make any decisions today either because I'm pissed time. off and I'm tired. Um, yeah, and they're two not not very good state of affairs. So far, Emil has shown glimpses of real trading ability, and was rewarded with sixty thousand pounds to invest. But today, he's adding to Lex's problems. That, sitting at that says 67,000, yeah? I was 64,000. He's exceeded the cash limit that Lex has set him. A cardinal sin in trading. I know what I've closed out, I know what I've invested. Doesn't make sense. Like, how do you want me to explain this to? What do you want me, what do you want me to say to him? Because if I call him now and say you're over, he's going to blow his top. Well, whatever then, I'll just trade out. <sighs> Hello? 
this morning, it's come to light that Emil's broken his exposure limit by 10%, right? And he didn't, and he didn't even realize. The point is, is like, they left the office last night and they didn't even check their exposure or their P&L or anything, right? Yeah. Both Anton and Lex feel part of Emil's problem is his friendship with Cleo. Why this has happened? Because he's just not focused. He's not watching his positions properly. He's just going home and he's just chatting to Cleo all day. Mm. He's been distracted again by her. It's just very difficult to have them both in the office. We just actually can't let this go today. I think... Um, we can't let this go. I know, it's like, it's one step too far now. Yeah. He wants a spreadsheet, right? Yeah. That's not the trade counter. Yeah. Right. And you have to put it together. Yeah. To show cost value versus current value of your positions and exposure, right? Okay. It's, it's fairly straightforward. Okay. Lex wants to penalize Emil. He's got to stop trading immediately and compile a list of all his investments from the last six weeks. You can get frustrated, can't you? Yeah, I've managed to switch back on and back. An hour later, and Emil's had enough. I'm not doing it. Seriously, I'm not even doing it now. I'm not, I'm not wasting my time. I'm not wasting my time doing it. Because it's, it's just stupid, this. I wasn't 67,000 over yesterday. I was 63 and a bit. Then you told me 10% well, over Well, you, look, you, you've got the sheet there now. Why don't you just send that one to Lex as it is? No, no, I'm not even doing it, seriously. I'm not playing games. I'm really not playing games when someone can't speak to your fucking face like a child and they run off and phone the dad. Because that's what it became. That's what it's been for the last few days and last week as well. And we all know it. And even admitted now there's a problem in dealing with me because he can't say it face to face. It's absolutely stupid. He has been rude to you. You know, and I'm really not happy about that. It's bullshit, mate. All we're doing is is spending all our time and pandering to the guys who are a joke. Yeah. It's always somebody else's fault when you fuck up. Yeah. You know? I hate that it's me. I hate the fact that it's me. Looking like I'm the difficult one. Looking like I'm the one who's no, arguing. No, you're not looking difficult. And it's always people, like, people, the best thing when they, people look at someone like me, it always appears that it's what I'm like, but I'm not like No, that. it's not that, mate. That now, it's one o'clock. I haven't done no work on any trades, yeah? American market's opening an hour and a half. I've got loads on there. I should be looking at. I should be doing more things. I want to reverse my position in rim, but now I don't know whether I can because of. I've been making Have money you for. It now? Has he got yeah, it? but I've been making money for like, like nearly 10, 11 days now, and that's why I feel frustrated. Yeah, I'm sure. And and you know, it, but it's only the negatives which are brought up. Yeah. Maybe that's a personality conflict. Yeah, I, I think know. you're right. But it's not fair. No. I don't want to want to be the centre of something. I don't want to disrupt no. other people's no. day. I don't want to be. I don't want to have conflict with people. You have a valid point. Mm. And it's ironic because I've got a reputation of being really ruthless in business. But that's only when it, it needs dictate. Things are getting out of hand. Lex is due to arrive tomorrow to distribute the remainder of his million dollars. Who gets the money and who gets the boot, only Lex can decide. Hey, come on, let's go. For the past two months, these seven rookies have been immersed in the world of trading. Right then, from the top, who wants to kick me off? Uh, Dow, plus 0.719. Check, S&P at 0.55, Nasdaq at 1.03. S&P futures up. Their lives have become a routine of daily meetings, financial data, and portfolio analysis. Gold broke 800 um, overnight, which is Super significant. Support line. If it breaks through that, then all these hedge funds are going to start unwinding their positions. Cool. Um, I don't know what time uh, his lord and master will be in today, uh, but I, I just expect Lex to be in at some point today as well. And someone was in a good mood yesterday evening. It always worries me. Anyway. But across the square mile at a breakfast meeting. Lex and Anton are about to bring down the axe. We're running a business. There's only two weeks left. The downtown grant is not really getting much worse, but it's also not improving. So, Cleo, 
it seems like she's been copying other people's trades. Yeah, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, she's a smart girl, she does analyze, but she's just not a trader. So, um, how about Amit? Amit's hit a brick wall. Major problem. <laughs> Unfortunately for Amit this time, it's just too late. He's hungry for the city life, yeah, the city lifestyle, to set one day, turn around and say, I'm a trader, right? But he doesn't want to do the work. I just can't see how he's going to make money. Emil? I think he's worth an investment. So I think he's got a lot of potential. He's been working hard. Um, he has diversified his portfolio. Mm. However, he's obviously made like a really big error and he broke his limit. And he seems to be totally distracted because of Cleo. We've had so much patience. Yeah. But we've got to give ourselves a chance to make some money back here. So the question is, let, do we let go of Cleo? Do we let go of Amit? Do we let go of both? Markets may be the toughest seen for years, but there are no excuses in the city. You're either doing well or you're not. And this fund is down over 10 grand. Emil, Cleo and Amit are about to receive a blunt reality check. Amit, do you have a say? So the question is, mm. um, why should we keep you? True. <laughs> True. It's, it's your opinion, obviously, isn't it? It's, it's, um, I can't make your decision for you. Um, I will endeavour to try my best and make some money, but if you think I'm going wrong and I'm going the wrong path, then that's your decision to make, you know? Yeah, I repeat the question, why should we keep you? Why should, we keep, why should we keep me? I think you've seen for the past few days that my piano is moving in the right direction. Right. Um, you see, for the past three days that you've done three trades, sure. of which only one was kind of new-ish. Sure, sure. So why should we keep you? Um, I've got two more weeks left, right? Um, well, you have two more weeks left if you answer the question properly. Okay. Try to convince me. Have, okay, have, one, have at least one go. Yeah, sure, yeah, no. I mean, I believe I can, I can make some money out of this. I've got two weeks to prove myself, Lex. I've worked more harder. I can tell you right now that I am working towards a goal, which is to get my PL back in blue. Because at the end of the day, one more person adding to the PL on the plus side will be in your benefit. But, yeah, if, but, if, if, but if I give that money to someone who's better, that's even more in my benefit. Of course. Okay, fine. Okay. I quite like the way when he's put under pressure, he actually stays pretty calm. I mean, for him, he knows it's the final conversation. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Positive? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Good. Good. Next is Cleo. Of what percentage of your, tr your stocks are, like, you know, generated by yourself, having done the work? All of them. I, I don't just jump on the back of other people's ideas, if that's what you're trying to insinuate. I'm not insinuating anything. Okay. Maybe you are the source of all ideas, and everybody comes to you and then puts it on after you put it on. Or, no, you know, every, other people have the idea and then, you know, you put it on after them. I've got my But reasons. let's take Nike, right? Yeah, I actually spoke to Emil about Nike. Right. And you Emil had his own reasons for going into Nike, but... But he had his own reasons. Well, obviously he did, but I... But I so, I, so have, funnily enough, there's, there's a hundred, let's say a hundred thousand stocks in the US. There is, there and, is, and but I'm And funnily enough, you read an article about Nike, and he happened to also have his own reasons. Well, no, no, no. And you both put it on. I, I, I generate ideas, and I do chat to people about my ideas. Seriously, the next two weeks are going to be so much harder. Yeah, but... Why do you want to put yourself through that? Why? Because, because it's, there's not going to be any niceties okay. for niceties' sake. Yeah, but you know what? I don't need niceties like, like, for niceties' sake. Like when Anton tells you to jump, you have to jump. Okay. That's just the way it has to be, because that's the way a trading room operates. And whatever personal morals or dilemmas you have... Yeah, you, I leave that aside. Take them home. Yeah, okay, Take fine. them home, because nobody's interested. Okay, fine. So, yeah. why should you stay? I am returning. I wasn't before. But if you go on a progression journey, then I've gone from not returning to returning. So therefore, in the next two weeks, hopefully, logic would say that I would continue to give you a percentage return on whatever money is invested in me. And you think you can deal with the pressure? Yes. If I'm dealt with in a normal manner, the same as everyone else. There you go again. If I dealt with it in a normal manner. No, it I'm doesn't matter. Like, every, like, if you're on a trading floor, you're always going to think that your boss has it in for you. No, I think you're wrong. Okay, I don't care what you think. 
This okay. is what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On a trading floor, you're always going to think. You, have you been on a trading floor? Have you worked there for 15 years or for 10 no. years? No. Okay. So I'm, so I'm telling you. And I appreciate not, it. Not, it's no longer an opinion. This is just what it is. Your boss knows what is good. So whatever Anton will say in the next two weeks is just the way it has to be. And that's why I'm worried about you that you actually think, well, maybe you can't deal with it. I think I can. Okay, okay we're going to talk more. Okay. <laughs> right. Thanks a lot. If you want me to have my resignation, I'm not going to do it. So you're just going to have to kick me out. <laughs> You know when you have a trading position, yeah? Yeah. And like these are our positions really, these people. And you, you end up being more praying instead of like just cutting. Mm. Cleo has made progress and it seems like she's emotionally pretty stable. I think you're wrong. She knows exactly when she has to, to display that she might be. But when she's sitting at that desk, she's all over the place. We've forced her into being invested and 80% of her positions are replications from the rest of the desk. Yeah. If we say goodbye to Cleo and she starts crying and getting upset, I'm worried that the meal is going to get like a hissy fit and he will walk out. It's just wrong. Like, this is not how a trading desk operates. So why no. should we do it here? Right? No. <laughs> you are actually quite talented, I think. But your fight for justice, of like everything around should be fair. Mm. Like in a city room, you, c you wouldn't survive with that attitude. You're but concerned that I'm going to be the person who throws the spanner in the works, which in turn is going to affect the group and the group's no. performance. If you do something that's negative to the group, yeah. you'll just go. Mm. Very simple. I am worried that you're going to do things that will be negative for you. Decisions will be made that you might not like, but it doesn't really matter. I just want you to, to just focus on that screen, invest, be smart, come up with lots of ideas, build a portfolio and do well. Emil may be rebellious, but he's a talented trader and Lex doesn't want to lose him. So your new capital is going to be 75. So you got 15 more, which is the only message that you really should take away. So what do you think? Good. You know. I've got work to do, haven't I? I know you are your own person, and that's why you were chosen. However, our challenge is, for the next two weeks, to make sure we end up with a positive P&L. Cool. Thank you. Thanks, Thank man. You. Bye, mate. Now it's decision time. Either Cleo, who's struggling to invest, or Amit, who's down £3,000, must go. If I looked at that trading room on Monday, so if you think about it, what it should look like on Monday, if, if he is gone, yeah, and Cleo is still sitting there, it just doesn't feel right, does just, it? I just, it just doesn't feel right, it doesn't work. If they're both there, then it feels like we've made no progress. Yeah. So I guess she has to go, right? Okay, how are, you gonna, how are we going to put it to her? Is she going to cry? She's going to cry. This is ridiculous. Let's do it. Hopefully in five minutes it will be over. Clear? Yeah. Thanks. <coughs> Thank you. No worries. So we've had long conversations. Okay. Obviously about the, the benefits of you being here or not being here. Mm -hmm. We've looked at the progress you've made mm -hmm. um, over the last six weeks. And it's been like, like pretty tough, but I think it's, it's, uh, it's not going to work. I'm sorry. So that's the decision. You're just not a trader. And is, it's just... Is there any point in me fighting my case at all? Not at all. Okay. Yeah, there's no point at all. Okay. We don't want to over-dramatize this, right? I mean, it's not like someone has just died or whatever. And in the last two weeks, we need to make our money back. Why don't you just say what you think? Let's okay. just be, let's just be, let's give everybody a fair chance. Oh, I don't even know. Well... You know, but there's probably no point, to be honest. I'm sorry. I mean, it's fair enough that you're upset. If it's any benefit to you, we feel really bad about it. You know, we feel it's really... No benefit. No benefit. I tell you one thing. Seriously. This gives us no pleasure. This gives us no pleasure. Like, okay. it's the same as, like, if you have a bad stock and you want to hold on to it, you know, you're going to have to cut. And we've learned from experience, if we don't, if we hold on to our bad positions, that we feel our bad positions, 
we have to get out of the position. No, no. So we feel seriously. we have to get out of this position. I appreciate that. You know? You know, I do. I just, you know, I feel in light of the fact that really I did quite well last week. But isn't that like the best way for it to end? That you feel like actually no, you, you did you everything what, you could. You did what everything would be the best you way could. For it to end would be for me to have been given more capital. That would give me more confidence. You know what? When I didn't receive that, this whole thing to me. Has be clear, you weren't ready for more capital. Be honest with yourself. Honestly, I really was. You went from 9,000 invested with a gun to your head to be more invested to yeah. 21. Right? I did, yeah. So really, without a gun to your head, right, you don't deserve more capital. Okay. Right. Yeah. It just, it can't be like that. I appreciate that. Right. It's a frustration at myself and I'm okay. really sorry. It's okay, it's fine. It's absolutely Leo, it's fine. Okay. It's much better if you just get it all out in the open. <laughs> you want some water? Should I get you some water? No, <laughs> don't know who was that. Oh, okay. No, honestly, I'm absolutely fine. It's just I'm trying to stop myself from crying because it's laughing. I want to But that's do. okay. That's okay. It's so frustrating because you're right. I'm looking for the I'm 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 looking for the perfect thing the whole time. That is why I haven't been trading. You know, if you have to look at like who has the highest IQ, you know, there's probably two or three people, and you and you're amongst them, but you're just not a trader. Sorry. No, don't worry. Honestly. Sorry. Okay. Um. Probably. The best thing, probably the best thing to do is limit the time spent in the office from now. Okay. Okay. Cool. Man, it wasn't easy, was it? Sorry, folks. For Emil, it's the last straw. You know what? People didn't come here to cry. I don't care what you say. You okay? Yeah. Okay, good. She agreed that she had these chances and she didn't take it. Shall we call him in? No, he's too angry at the moment. Let him calm down. You're off. You're off. Oh, no, it's a joke. And they're all just waiting for it to say it's not a distraction no, or no, something else. Seriously. But it's bullshit. It's bullshit. I want to see what he does naturally, without our influence. If he walks. Your decision or not your decision, Cleo? Not your decision, is it? It doesn't. It does matter. He's going. He's getting emotional. He's going. He's pulling off his stuff. Yeah. Emil, I'm yeah. furious. Emil, please. No, 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 seriously, it's not you, honestly. He's gone. Fine. Just chill and let things happen naturally. Well, I... My decision. Our decision. People have spoke about it. No, it doesn't I... matter. Seriously, it's bullshit. I'm completely okay. It's not I about you, Cleo. We're cool on it as well ourselves, honestly. That's it. Fall out. It's going. Please stop it. Sam and Amit surprise everyone by walking out in a show of solidarity oh, too. Cleo, it's not you. No, but it will appear like it's me. Well, it's not you. People have made their own I decision. Feel... It's just people have had enough in general. Yeah, but Emil. I've got Emil's... a few words to say, seriously. No, no, Emil, but no, Emil, I've got please. A few ways to say. Emil, please. Okay. Okay, Emil, sit no, down. No, sit no, down no. Let, no. Let him speak. Let no, him let speak. me speak, yeah, okay. I understand where you're going with everything, how it works in the city and everything else, but there's a fine line when it comes to being human beings, yeah? And now you see other people in the room responding to that. City or no city, it doesn't matter. Why did you, we had a conversation with Cleo, right? Yeah, I know you had a conversation with Why Cleo, you speak, and I've had a conversation let, speak, with you, no, and I've had a conversation speak with Cleo. To, speak to her, speak to Cleo. I don't need Cleo to speak to Cleo. Yeah, Cleo will explain to people it's not what the conversation just about was. Cleo. It's not I understand, just about I understand, Cleo. Cleo can explain what it's the conversation was in this room. It's not just about Cleo, Lex. It's about being human. That it's about spending no. six weeks okay. in the no, no, I appreciate Cleo, it's not you, seriously. No, Emil, I've said already, and I've said to the group. I know, it's not, it's Cleo. This is me being frustrated it's, at it's myself. Cleo. And my, you know. It's not just Cleo. It's not just about that, Lex. To be honest, no. I really have nothing to say. Cool, not a problem, then. I have nothing to say. Not a problem. I do not know what the fuck is going on here and what the sentiment is in this room. So either we get this out in the open and stop making fucking knee-jerk, crappy judgments. No, Mike, it's not knee-jerk, crappy about it. judgments. Well, yes, it is, Emil, because no, I don't not. know what's going on. My choice, whether I walk out this room, is Absolutely. my choice. So I'm exercising Absolutely. my choice to walk out Fine. the room. Yeah. Anyone else who's walking out the room is exercising their own choice. You have your choice whether you stay or you go. No one is compromising you. Cool. Okay? Yeah. Not a problem, then. Okay. I'm, I'm going, um, okay. and I'd just like to say thanks very Thank much to everyone. Take it easy. Really. Right. <laughs> you go stay to your call. Cool. Lose the money. <laughs> I 
really think you sh you've got two weeks left and you should I've grasp this time. opportunity. I, this is me. And you've reached a point that. where there's a line crossed. I've said that to you for the last few weeks oh, no. and it's just crossed it again today. If it wasn't this, it would be something else, trust me. It would be something else and there's something else and there's something else. Okay? We can't be created in someone else's image or anything else. It's just the way it is. Mm. We always said this is really, really difficult. Only very few people can do it. If they walk out, then it just shows, yes, it's actually really difficult to make it to the end. No, did I, really? It's been a pleasure. Go well. Good luck with this. Mm, you. Yeah, you. you know what? I feel so good. That is the best I've felt in six weeks. <laughs> I feel fantastic. <laughs> what the fuck just happened there? Jesus Christ. Very, very strange. I did it whether they expected that kind of reaction. <laughs> it's no a coincidence to me that the, the guys who are losing the most, most money have found the excuse to walk out. Oh yeah, we feel great. Look how happy I feel. Yeah, Seriously, it's, really it's not you. Really you, then I don't want to be the Catholic. You're not. They've got a different idea of doing things. It's the harsh way, it's the city way. But we're not city people, right? Yeah. No, we're I'm not good people. I'm not, and I'm not compromising how I feel or anything else. Like, let's say you're sitting at the trading desk, yeah? And your best buddy has just been fired, yeah? I'll see him in a few weeks for a drink. <laughs> the only mistake we have made is we should have gotten rid of, of Cleo two weeks ago. It's not like our best people left. We left with Ohi, with Caroline, and with Mike. The top three have stayed. Our worst people left. People who are actually losing money will try to find any excuse possible to get out of it because they're hurting. None of us really want to be in an environment where people are treated really badly for the sake of making money. And so it's a real shame, in a way. Ohi is upset by the walkout. The hardcore boys. It's a pleasure. You're the hardcore boys. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Maybe some more. Ohi, what's your plan? fact is, as much as I feel the empathy for the others, yeah. I, I'm in it for a different reason, so I want to stay to the end. Well, listen, for a guy, at for for a guy end, of your age, that decision yeah, is incredibly yeah. mature. Seriously. So, do not feel bad about wanting to do well for yourself in this business. I've seen a lot of people not being able to emotionally deal with it. I've seen people cry on the desk, I've been, seen people throw screens on the floor, you know, I've people, seen people have a fit, I've seen people walk out, run out, lose total control, I've seen it all. So to see four people get up, you know, it's not like, oh, oh, this is really new to me, I've never seen this before, whatever. I just think it's just stupid, you know. To walk out in an emotional manner, like that, just to say, like, oh, I'm going, I can't take this anymore, I'm going. It's just such a sign of weakness. As a team, the chance of me to make money over the next two weeks has gone up three times, so I'm okay. Nobody has to worry about me. Those who walked have lost their trading rights. Over the next couple of hours until further notice, could you only allow Caroline, Ohi, and Mike to trade? Caroline, anyone? Ohi, and Mike. Yeah, if anyone else rings up, they're not allowed to trade, okay? No problem. All right. All right, mate. Thanks, Excuse mate. Me. Cheers, bye. Cheers. It's all down to the final three. They are the traders now trusted with Lex's entire $1 million fund. We now have zero distraction in the office. The rest of the guys were losing money, okay? And you guys are left, which is, which is fantastic. So we need a strategy. You're gonna be on 200. You guys are on 145 each. We're gonna go through every single position and work out whether we should keep it or not. Okay, Amit, TPT. We need to come to a conclusion quick. I wouldn't want to trade it. British American tobacco. I don't want this. ITE. I think it's a Muppet position. Yeah. Get out of that. Screw it. Out it goes. Do you want to own more Tesco? Yeah, I probably do. Well, this is working out for you greatly. <laughs> Who's got a view on the HMV game group? Yeah. Yeah? Cleo, Tate, forget about it. Yeah? yeah, it's closed. Is that a good trade? Well, I don't want it. Don't useless. Get rid of that. Useless. Get rid of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this a toxic stock? That just doesn't add up. Maybe that's why he's only made £2.53 in 10 days. <laughs> <laughs> After picking over the bones of the absent traders' portfolios, all it takes is one phone call. The Rupert, hi, it's Mike. Is Luke there? 
and over £160,000 of investments are closed. OK, let's go. I'd make best execution, obviously, yeah? Yeah. Dig up line for me, Rupert, come on. TPT, LN. Yeah, totally. Five, two, five, zero, zero. BATSLN. American Tobacco. Correct, cell 274. 1850. ITELN. 169.75. ULELN. 1349. By 200. NG 300 sold at 708. National Express. 500 away at 1003. Cell 790. By 900. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Done. I really enjoyed myself today, actually. Um, Maybe that's wrong with the other four gone and I should be, you know, bemoaning their passing, but I, it's, it's, you know, I can't, I've got to get on with, with this last two weeks. You know, if I want a job as a trader, you know, I can't wring my hands over things like that. Sorry, Sam, it's a bad world. With 10 days left to trade, the hedge fund now comprises a student, a single mum and a soldier. As the best performers, they've got to try and claw back some profit from the losses some of the others have left behind. And see who overall will emerge as the best trader. Oh, here we go. Sell 828, 974, spot 5. I'm looking to buy 500 at 875. I'm looking at EasyJet. First group, please. GP. Could you confirm the ticker first? Sell 663 at 1507. I want to sell some. 2,500. Let's try and do them in between the spreads. Say 415. You're out of it. The headache is gone. 1106. Thank you very much. It's now the last day, and the traders have until 12 p.m. to close all their positions. Let's go make some money. Cobham, Charlie, Oscar, Bravo. Done. You sell 1,050 at 11.66. Hey, well there. I'm looking at Avidaster, ADSGY. I think that you can't just look at a stock as something that goes up and down. Like, there's an underlying story behind it learn how much everybody loves it or hates it, how much people see their futures in it. You can see all of the greed in this stock and that's quite amazing to see. Hi, it's Caroline at Traders. Um, Whitbread. I think you have to be emotionally very well balanced. If you can't live with having that pressure on you, then trading is not for you. I just hit the bid for 110. Mate, this is a viciously, viciously difficult game. It's absolutely horrible when the market isn't going your way. <laughs> Bastard. It's just some of the most monstrously uncomfortable I've ever been in my entire life. 27 spot 453, I sell 687. Thank you and good night. Cheers, Carl. Bye. Bye. Done. Yeah, I will miss it. Yeah, I really will. Um, just really enjoy it. And uh, it's just like, it's just like soldiering, you know. When it's um, it's really hard graft and you're really cold, wet and muddy. Um, it's great afterwards because you sort of know that you you survived it. How much time have we got left? Not long. Not long. All right, you are done. Okay, then. Thank you very much. It's not going to make it. Uh, I've done three thousand sold at three fifty-one. Okay, that completes my book. Are you done? Yes, I am. No way. <laughs> All right. All right Caroline. Thanks a lot. See you later on. Thank bye bye. You. Bye. I'm not going to watch it anymore. The bugger's going to go into the black, isn't it? I'm not having that. <laughs> oh, it's at 3.53 now. Shut up. <laughs> I want to know. We're done. We're done. Superb. So we're going to crunch the numbers. Let's see how you got on. Lex Van Dam is about to deliver his last assessment to the traders. Before he does, he needs their final figures. The past two months have seen incredible market volatility. Even professional hedge funds have struggled, losing on average almost 5%. Over the same period, collectively this fund lost £12,000, or 2.4%. So they've performed better than the professionals. The most successful individual trader is Ohi, 
who's made a trading profit of 1%. Well, most of the others, you know, you kind of know what you get. But with you, you're just not so predictable. So, you know, you have like really original ideas and you have definitely like moments of brilliance. My thoughts fight each other. That's the only way I could put so it. So it's like, it's almost like you have conflict in yourself yeah. that comes through in your trading. Yeah. Profit-wise, you were my best trader. But if I had to pick one trader, it wouldn't be you. Yeah. Because like I feel, I feel that conflict and I'm worried like, you know, maybe it, it goes the wrong way. But I think that's the one thing that, you, that you're going to have to work on. So you have a lot of potential in you. I do think you're a natural born winner. The fact is, through all of the joy and the pain, I did have a lot of fun. It's like playing chess against, you know, the rest of the world. <laughs> you have like a really, really high understanding of the game. Like a lot of people who've traded for a long time still don't get that. You got it in, t in two months. You understood it and you made money out of it. So you are very talented. Thanks. <laughs> well mm. done, well done. Great. Thanks. Mm. Mike also beat the professionals, losing just 1% overall. You focused, you um, controlled your risk, you didn't get emotional, you didn't behave childish. You know, so you were very dependable. So I really think that, you know, if you want to be in this industry, I would really recommend you. you know? I mean, that is, that's a brilliant compliment. Thanks very much, Lex. We've outperformed the hedge fund index. That's the good news. <laughs> <laughs> the bad news is I lost money. So obviously I would have liked to pay you a bonus. Unfortunately, nobody gives me the cash to pay the bonus. The upside was always going to be about the experience, really. It wasn't going to be yeah. about, you know, the... the millions that I could have earned. It was a really, really difficult period. So you should not underestimate your own achievement. That's fantastic. Yeah, it's some... Um, so congratulations. Like Thanks, Lex. Yeah. Well done. Well done. Thanks, mate. For Caroline, a 0.5% profit. So if you had to do this sort of like every day at this degree of intensity where you have to be in the office at 6.30 mm -hmm. and you watch the market till 9 at night, yep. do you think that's like sustainable? It's a question of, I've got two young children, I'm a single mother, and they come first. Yeah. So if I had to pick one person to come with me, it would be you. Oh, well, thank you for that. You know, I would consider you um, the best trader. I think if there was one moment, for me personally, over the last ten weeks, that made it worth it, was when four people stood up, and you were sitting there, and you were totally calm and collected. So, mm -hmm. you know, hell broke out, and you're sitting there, and just, like, focus on your screen. That for me actually was probably the moment of the last 10 weeks that was like totally amazing. To have three guys in the end who we believe genuinely have the potential to do it is fantastic. We, we, we really actually can be proud. In July I made 0.3%. In August I lost 1%. So I lost 0.7% over those two months. So you guys outperformed me and you've not done it before. So obviously I have to sort of like start rethinking my whole existence. <laughs> <laughs> so no, so, so you guys did seriously well. Since leaving the trading floor, Sam, Cleo and Emil have returned to their day jobs. Amit continues to trade at home in his corner shop using his own money. Simon is making new plans for his retirement. Ohi has returned to his economics degree. Caroline is planning a new business venture. And Mike is now running a vet practice, but still hopes to become a professional trader one day. From million dollar traders to billion dollar bailouts in half an hour, why does the car industry deserve special help? Are we entering a period of deglobalization? And Ian McEwan joins us to pay tribute to John Updike. Newsnight, right after the Culture Show from Scotland, next on BBC Two.